it's your boy Wits Capone back with another video and today I'm going to be talking about the football players I looked up to growing up so obviously before I start obviously I might do a part two to this in it because there may be some players that I forgot to add to the list or yeah like things like that in it so yeah this is not in any order or anything but I feel like the first person I had to put on my list was Thierry Henry in it Everybody that knows me, knows me, knows that Thierry Henry is my guy. You get me? Thierry Henry is my guy. He's the reason, like, he's the main reason why a man started watching football, why a man started supporting Arsenal and that, you get me? Not even just, like, him, but obviously partly my dad, innit? But the, the main reason why a man supports Arsenal is because of him. Like, he just had swag. Like, he was swaggy on the ball, had the pace like arrogance but he had arrogance in a good way you get me he was the sort of player where he knew he was that good didn't it he knew he was that good like he just had that ability he he had like very good as well decision making because that's what defines world-class players from average players decision making that's a very very big part of football and also like I said, swag. Stat, he's, he was a very stylish player as well. Because I remember back in school, primary day, um, prim, I say primary days, primary school days, in school and that, I remember when, when we used to um, do like year five versus year six and all of that, like everyone wanted to play like Thierry Henry in it. You get me? I remember when Henry used to put his, his socks up to his knees and that. He's the, one, he's the, the baller that started that shit. You get me? Because before that, no one was, like, lifting up their socks all the way to their kneecaps and that. No one was doing that. You get me? He wore the, um, the, the gloves as well. You see when Henri had a, a fresh trim? When he cut it and he went fully bald? You know he was, he was about to be on smoke. You get me? Henri is the king. The fucking king. Especially in the Premiership as well, like. He's literally the greatest to come from the Premier League, like. No one, no one argue with me. No one say Drogba or anything like that. Even though Drogba was a world-class baller himself. He was not on Henri's level. He simply wasn't. Even Drogba, they asked Drogba in an interview. There was that rah, like, you and Henri, who do you think is better, innit? And he was like, nah, I'll be real. I'm a world-class player, but Thierry Henry is better than me. He just said it live, oh, you get me? Because he knew what it was. Even, um, it got that, like, Henri was that good that even Van Nistelrooy, that used to play for uh, Man United, was like, oh, I used to check every game to see if, like, Thierry Henry scored. And if he scored, I would go home fuming. Because Henri was just that good. He's won four golden boots in the Premier League for a reason. Not even Sergio Aguero has done that. And Aguero's elite as well. So that's telling you a lot, like how just how good Thierry Henry was. And he didn't just score against small teams, because that's false. He scored against Chelsea many times. He scored against Man United many times. He scored against Tottenham many times. He scored against Liverpool. Even that famous run, he he uh, put Jamie Carragher under on his bum. Scored the um literally first time we beat Real Madrid at the Bernabeu. He scored. You get me? So, yeah, man, like, Henri carried us, and that's someone that made me, like, honestly appreciate football for what it is. You get me? So, moving on, another person that made me really, really appreciate football as well is man like R9, Brazilian Ronaldo. Imagine, yeah, how good he was before he got injured. And you know what's so mad? He was injured, and he was still that good. So imagine if he didn't even have the injury in the first place, how good he would be. It would be like it would be ridiculous. You get me? I just feel like he was a like one of the big spots in that famous um, Brazil team in the in the mid two thousands. You get me with Kaká, Dinho, Roberto Carlos, Adriano, um, flipping Juan at centre back. Yeah, like these sort of like revolutionary players. Like, do you get what I'm trying to say? And he was always consistent everywhere he went. At Barcelona, consistent. At um, Real Madrid, consistent. Um, AC Milan, he was coming to his end of his career. He was still badding up. 
He was still banging nets, even when he was declining. You get me? What a player, man. Even when he played at... Um, let me not forget that game when he scored a hat-trick at Old Trafford and United fans clapped him off and that. Because he was just that good. It's as simple as that. You get me? So, yeah, the next player I can see I looked up to you was man like Ronaldinho. Everybody knows Ronaldinho is pure entertainment. He makes you want to watch football and appreciate football for what it is. You get me? Obviously... He started off um, as a kid. He started off at Gremio. Then after um, Gremio, he went to um, a Paris Saint-Germain, played alongside Pochettino, Makelele, um, Okocha. And that's already building up your name. Like, do you know what I mean? As in, like, great players and that. So, yeah. Playing with, like, great players and that. Do you know what I mean? So he's building up his, like, his CV and that. And then I remember when he, um, when, he was up, when he went to Barcelona, literally, like, the guy was a joke. Scoring um, goals against Chelsea. I remember that goal. Literally stood there, stood there, bang. Like, you couldn't, you couldn't get the ball off this guy, innit? You could not get this ball off this guy. He can literally nutmeg you with his eyes closed. If he wanted to, he was just that good. It was it was a joke, ridiculous. What a player, do you know what I mean? And I feel like we got the best out of like Ronaldinho for a good, I would say five to six years. And all them five to six years, he was just world class, like literally world class. All these player of the years and that what he won, he deserves every single one of them, cause. There was even a time, yeah, this is how you know Ronaldinho is mad influential to the football scene. Even youngers, because I remember he went to some um, some cage, innit? Man went to some cage. And, like, there was bare olders, like, around my age, because I'm, I'm 25, innit, in my mid-20s, innit? Everyone was getting gassed. Even the youngers, the young bucks, that didn't even watch Ronaldinho play, but probably watch his highlights on YouTube and that, was like, rah, yeah, we know who this guy is, bruv. You get me? That's what you call a revolutional player. You get me? So, yeah, man. Big up Ronaldinho. Next player is going to surprise people, but he was a real gunman finisher. But if you know, you know. In real life, not even just in real life, but an LMA manager as well. Do you get it? So, yeah. Next person is um, Roy Mackay. This guy at Deportivo was a fucking joke. Him, Diego Tristan, Valeron. If you know your football, you know exactly what I'm talking about, innit? Do you get what I'm saying? And, yeah, man, I just feel like he was a big part of Depo Deportivo La Coruña's success. You get me? Because I remember that team they had when they had um, Valeron, Joaquin, um, Diego Tristan. That's the team that took them to the semi-finals in 03-04 and they played uh, Porto, Jose, Jose Mourinho's Porto at the time. And then, um, obviously, Porto then went on to win the Champions League in that season. You get me? Joke of a player. And even when he went to um, Bayern Munich as well, the guy was scoring ridiculous goals. Ridiculous goals. Do you know what I mean? Clinical finisher. Literally, if I was a manager and there was a striker that's in his prime, he's one of the, the strikers I would sign. Easily. Easily. All day long. All day long. Next player, ironically, is... Um, I'm, I'm going to mention is Valeron. He was in the centre of the midfield for Deportivo La Coruña when Deportivo La Coruña was on stuff back in the day. Back in the day, Deportivo La Coruña's team was so fake. Hence why they got to the semi-finals in the first place. And Valeron and Diego's Trist, uh, Diego Tristan's link-up play, back then, they just knew how to read each other and they thrived, they thrived off one another. Do you know what I mean? I just feel like yeah, man. These two together, they were just, like, ridiculous, man. Next player I'm going to mention, man like Diego Tristan. Yeah, like, <laughs> literally, again, Diego Tristan used to, like, oh, them t especially in his prime as well. Diego Tristan in his prime was a joke. When Diego Tristan went to West Ham, by then he was finished. But Diego Tristan at De um, Deportivo... Gunman finisher. Not many strikers could check to him around them times. 
not many strikers. I'm telling you that for free. And now, I'm going to kind of start with my defenders a little bit. Big up man like Lucio. Because you know that saying, ball playing centre-back? Lucio was the one that started that. You get me? Lucio was the one that revolution, like revolutionised that centre-back position. Because back in the day, and when I'm talking back in the day, I'm even talking before Lucio's time and that, it was more get the ball as a defender, hoof it to the midfielder or the striker. Do you know what I mean? Like, basically, like, no like no nonsense. Even though Lucio was no nonsense, he was also a very good ball-playing centre-back as well. Do you know what I mean? And in his prime for Bayern Munich, like, he had a lot of world-class strikers in their prime as well on smash. Do you know what I mean? On smash. So, yeah, man, big up Lucio. Those of you that know your football properly would know exactly who I'm talking about. And I don't even need to go into depth about this player. Because I just feel like, for me, he was one of the best and he didn't get the, recogni the recognition that he deserved, didn't it? Next centre-back. Oh, pfft. this guy at, La at Lazio. I remember when, when I first um, had my eye on this guy. I first saw him play in that joke of a player. What a baller. Man like Nesta. What? What a player. Like This guy was solid. Not many, again, not many centre-backs could chat to Nesta. Nesta was a fucking rude boy. Do you get what I'm saying? And then obviously later on down his career, he went from Lazio to AC, AC Milan. He was part of the AC Milan team. I don't know if he was playing, but I know he was definitely part of the AC Milan team that won the Champions League. You get me? If you're win winning the Champions League, yeah, he was a big part of that as well. So if you're winning the Champions League with your club and you start most of the, most of the games that make you win the Champions League, then you're not a joke. You're not a joke, man. You're not a joke of a player. You get me? You're actually very integral to the team. So, yeah, big up Nesta as well. Ah, oh, this, oh, this one I'm going to mention, yeah? Fabio Cannavaro. This defender here. This defender here. Italian. Listen, see when you talk about no-nonsense de defending? He's, he epitomises that. He's literally... In a dictionary, if you had Fabio Cannavaro and you had the definition, the first thing that will come up is no-nonsense defending. Literally. The guy got rid of everything. 2006 World Cup, when he won the, um, the, the World Cup for Italy. He was immense. Consistency. See, when, when I look at a, um, a player that's world class, I think consistency. Yeah, you, may, you might be a good player, but how, how often do you produce that, that magic? Do you get it? So that, that, for me, that's the difference between an average player, a good player, and a world class player. Do you get it? So yeah, man. He literally won Italy that World Cup because defensively, he literally knew what he was doing. Like his position as a defender, he knows, he knows, like he just had that experience in it, put it that way. He had that experience. So yeah, big up Fabio Cannavaro. Back to the strike, um, a striker now. This guy, I grew up watching him differently. I remember um, primary school days, yeah. When I would wake up like early in the morning, like let's say 5.30, 6 a.m. in the morning. If you know about Pierre Van Hoydonk here, yeah? Van Hoydonk, that played for Feyenoord, yeah. And he played for like other teams like Fenerbahce and that as well. But I watched him when he was at Feyenoord. This guy is another gunman finisher. What? The guy could the guy could shoot. The guy can um had a good leap on him. Can head the ball. Um can even Defend when he needs to defend as well. And this is... I'm saying that as a striker. He's a striker and he's doing that. Not many strikers nowadays want to work back for their team as well. It's all well and good scoring goals, like assisting and all of that. But you have to chip in and defend as well. Yeah, that's not your job. But ultimately, it's a team game. You get me? You have to help your teammates when you can. You get me? So, yeah, man, big up Van Huydong. He was a ridiculous baller. Um, baller. Those, for those of you that know, big up yourselves as well. Then, aye, the next, the next guy I'm about to mention that I looked up to, man like Alvaro Rocoba. You see Rocoba? Joke. Fucking joke. See, when it came to free kicks, yeah? When it, when it came to free kicks, this guy had, a, like, literally, it was disgusting. Like, the guy will bang it, bins. Like most times he had free kicks, 
he would always bang it. And he, and his accuracy in his shots was a joke as well. Do you know what I mean? So, yeah, man. Big up Rakol. But I remember when he had his um, long hair. He used to wear it with, with a black headband and that. Those were the days when Inter Milan was Inter Milan. Obviously, they're kind of like working their, their way up now. Do you know what I mean? But they're not... Let's be real. They're not what they used to be. When it was Golasio, like Golasso days. I remember I used to watch it on Channel Four, Channel Five. Yeah, I think it was Channel Four. That guy, the the bold, the 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 um the the bold guy, and you be holding the newspaper and like, like having like a croissant or something. But I remember them days. That's when Syria was at its peak when they had man like Del Piero, Trezeguet, fucking um. I don't know, who can I even mention? In Pipo and Filippo and Zaggy, um, Nesta, um, man like fucking Dina Tar oh, Dina Tali's another joke as well. What a fucking player. What a fucking player. So yeah, um moving on. Big up Avaro um Rocoba, but yeah, moving on. Adriano. Do you know how good this guy was? Like, the guy had 99 shot power on Pro 6 for a fucking reason. This guy was ridiculous. Had a gift. You see when they say there's, there's players that have to work hard to get um to become what they are, and then there's players that had a natural gift? He was one of them players that had a natural gift. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah, he was one of them players that had a natural gift. Do you know what I'm saying? But unfortunately, like some players, something happens to them. They go down the wrong path. Or like someone like pivotal to them in their family dies. They just go off the rails and then the rest is history, innit? This one here, you get me? This one here, man like Mark Viduka. Australian and that, but he was of, like, um, Croatian descent as well. Do you know what I'm saying? So, yeah, man like, man like Viduka, I used to watch him when he was at Leeds, Leeds United and that. And these times here, Leeds United were a proper good team. They had man like Harry Kill, Alan Smith, Rio Ferdinand at a point before he got his move to Man United. Yeah, man, the guy was just a clutch finisher. And he didn't just score in small games. He also scored in big games as well. To me, Mark Viduka was so underrated. Me personally, in the Premier League, I think he's one of the best Premier League strikers of all time. And yes, that's a big statement, I know. But this guy was... Pff, oh, pff, this guy was exceptional, man. An exceptional football player. Those of you that watched the Premier League, were not even like... You no, know, like he had match of the day. People just think of match of the day. Me... I'm an old school guy. I don't just think of match of the day. I think of when foot when football um Premier League highlights used to come on ITV. You get me? When football used to come on ITV, that's when Leeds was Leeds. You get me? When they used to um play at Ellen Road. Obviously, they still play at Ellen Road now, but back then, the Allen the at man said the Allen the atmosphere back then at Ellen Road was far superior to what it is now, isn't it? You get me? So, yeah, big up yourself, um, Mark Viduka. Next person, man like Kaka. Ah, oh, there was a point, yeah, where this guy was just unstoppable, literally. There was one, I think there was one season where he was so unstoppable to the point where he even won Ballon d'Or. Do you know what I mean? Obviously, Ballon d'Or doesn't always reflect on how good someone is because sometimes they do get it wrong. But on this case, in that season, he deserved to win Ballon d'Or. Literally, the guy was doing his thing for AC Milan. You get me? He produced it for a lot of years. I'll say for like a good five to six years. But there was that one season in particular where he just he just went crazy, innit? He snapped. You get me? So yeah, big up Kaka. Next, you see this person I'm about to uh, mention, man like Hernan Crespo. You see when we talk about positioning as a striker, this guy is one of them strikers that had good movement. Cross, near post, flick on, goal. 
Hernan Crespo, and he was known for his his long hair and his white headband, didn't it? And obviously, he played for what Chelsea, Inter Milan, and and all these other teams, didn't it? You get me? But yeah, he's with with Hernan, Hernan Crespo. Yeah, I just feel like he's like if you're in, inspired, like if if you want to be a footballer. And let's say you're a striker and you're coming up and you're, you're learning your craft as a striker today. Search up Hernan Crespo and watch his goals. His positioning, where he starts off, when he gets into the box, how he manages to weave, weave himself past the defender, get himself in front, of the, um, in front of the defender and win the ball. Class, man. Class player. And then... Um, Last but not least, actually no, not even last but not least, but second to last, big up Luis Fabiano. This guy, I remember I used to watch La Liga a lot back then. And I remember when Sevilla, um, Sevilla had the team of Luis Fabiano, Sergio Ramos, um, who else did they have? Renato, Adriano, the one that played for um, Barcelona. Um, who else did they have? Danny Alves, oh, see Danny Alves, them times, joke, and this is even before people knew of Danny Alves, before he got his move to Barcelona, because I remember I used to play a lot of football manager, big up Nana, man, get me, my cousin that, like, he knows that I know football, innit, and I'll be real, part of the reason why I know football is because of him, you get me, we used to play a lot of football manager, a lot of LMA manager and that, we used to have a lot of, like, competitive rivalry and that which is normal to to have as cousins you get me so yeah Luis Fabiano was another football football player that was like very gifted do you know what I mean so yeah man I've literally named all of the football well not all of them because I might be forgetting a few but these are the football players that I looked up to growing up in it do you know what I mean so yeah before I go make sure you don't forget to like the video you don't forget to subscribe and most importantly you don't forget to share the video do you know what i mean because at the end of the day that's what helps me get noticed in the youtube scene but yeah other than that it's been your boy with capone and i'm out